As the world became more mysterious, there are people who were able to awaken their powers. One of them was Shu, and apart from his own power, he had a special ability that no one else had. The story began when Shu was still a baby and his mother carried him as if they were running away from something. While his mother was singing for Shu, a lady, named Lin, came out of its house. Lin invited Shu's mother to come inside her house, because she was also worried that her baby might get sick. But Shu's mother asked Lin to hold on Shu for the meantime and told her that she was going to buy medicine first. Lin noticed the walnut-shaped pendant on Shu and when she turned back to Shu's mother, it suddenly disappeared. Eighteen years later, while at a festival, Shu and his adopted child named Xiaoyu ran into a fiery show. Since they could not see the presenters at their location, Shu pulled Xiaoyu and they went to the front part. When Shu was about to be hit by the fire, he noticed that the time seemed to stop for a moment and he suddenly saw a sword. His walnut pendant lit up and he felt strange too. As they continued to watch the show, he began to observe that the performer was no longer performing magic, but rather a natural power. After the show, Xiaoyu thought of going to the backstage to see the performer and ask if it could teach them how to do the magic. Since Xu also wanted to know something about it, he agreed to Xiaoyu's request and they went to the backstage. They saw the performer talking to a group of people when it was suddenly shot and was put to sleep. Xiaoyu was shocked and screamed, and these men saw the two of them. Both of them just came out and Xu made an excuse that they got lost while looking for the restroom. When they came out, they met a man and asked what they saw at the backstage. He introduced himself as ZY, but Xu and Xiaoyu did not answer and just left him there. As they walked away from the man they met, Xu thought about what they saw earlier. When they got home, they found Lady Lin outside and was heating some medicine for Mr. Lee. After they entered the house, they watched on TV the abnormal events captured by the camera. Shu was about to cook noodles, but Xiaoyu told him that she preferred instant noodles because she did not like the taste of his cooked food. Because of this, Shu was forced to go out to buy instant noodles. While walking to the store, he remembered the days when he and Xiaoyu were still children and how she always ran away from the orphanage to visit him because she wanted to be with him. When he was about to cross the street, he was hit by a truck. While lying and bleeding, the pendant suddenly lit up and made him float. When it broke, a great power was released from it that gradually flowed through his veins. The nervous truck driver approached him. Shu noticed that he did not feel any pain in his body, even though he was hit hard by the truck. When he noticed the driver, he got up immediately to ask him to pay for the injuries he suffered. But the driver got scared and mistook him for a ghost, so it quickly got into the truck and left him there. Since then, he could see numbers above the people's head every time he meet them. When he returned home, he gave Xiaoyu what he bought, and he took a shower. He noticed that he did not have any injuries on his body, but he saw something shining on his palm. While in his room and observing his palm, a power system suddenly appeared in front of him. He saw there the numbers with the names of people that he did not know. Only then that he remembered the numbers that he was seeing on the people's heads. He found out that the numbers increased with every negative emotion a person had towards him, so he realized that his power had awakened. And thought of himself like a demon king. Since there was also a lottery in this system, he bet the points he collected previously. He managed to win an apple and when he bit on the fruit, he felt relief in his body. He tried the lottery again but he always lost, until his last bet where he won the lyrics of a song. He sang it, and as he closed his eyes, a light gathered on his hands. When he opened his eyes, he was surprised that his surroundings had changed like he was in another dimension. It turned out to be his celestial map, and he was still able to talk to Xiaoyu. He noticed that Xiaoyu was already annoyed at him, and took advantage of this to increase the points. While eating and watching TV, he suddenly felt something strange. They saw on the news that there was currently a fire going on near them, so Xu went out to look at it from the roof of their house. He saw two people on the roof, and was amazed at the incredible height of their jumps. One of them felt that someone was staring at them, so Shu hid quickly. As Shu was descending on the ladder, the men caught up with him. They asked him what he was doing on the roof of the house, and Shu said that he was just getting the dried radishes. 
They did not feel that Shu was already an awakened one, so they left him alone. Just a few moments after Shu entered the house, a man suddenly fell from the roof. When they approached it, it turned out to be the one who performed at the fiery show, named Leung. Shu thought that this might be the culprit in the fire that happened, so the men he saw earlier were chasing it. After he mentioned Liang's fees in case they treat him, a number appeared on its head, so he immediately knew that Liang was just pretending to be unconscious. He took advantage of this to increase his points until Liang was forced to get up. When Liang grabbed on Shu, he tried to burn its arm, but to his surprise, Shu was immune to his power. Even though he tried it again and again, the same thing happened. Because of this, Liang said that he was just kidding, and Shu just sent him away. When Shu entered his room, he tried to buy a celestial fruit from the power system. After he swallowed it, he went back to his celestial map again. When he returned, he was able to lift his bed without difficulty. The next day, while he was selling eggs, his classmates passed by. One of them, named Lu, tried to tease him, but Shu teased him back and Lu was the one got annoyed in the end. Then Shu managed to convince Lu to buy his remaining goods. In order for Lu to avoid paying the goods, he thought of showing the VIP card that he was carrying and pretended that he had no cash with him. But suddenly one of their classmates, named Qingzi, came and hand out money for Lu to borrow. At that moment, Shu suddenly felt that she was also an awakened person. While in their room, Shu checked on the different levels of an awakened person. One of their classmates came and informed them that their other classmate had awakened, and it was Li Kui. Suddenly, there were people who came at school to take care of those who had been awakened like his classmate. Shu was about to follow these two when he met Qingxi descending the stairs, who seemed hiding her abilities from those people. When he got to the rooftop, students were terrified when Li Kui lift his teacher whom he had a fight and was about to drop him from the building. But Shu intervened and caught the attention of Li Kui. After that, he returned to their room. The blood testing was about to start for those students who would be chosen for the Dao Yuan class. When he got home, he saw Ji Wei who had just finished talking to Lin. When they met, Ji Wei wanted to shake hands with him, but Shu did not accept it. The next day, his classmates were talking about Li Kui's return and the Dao Yuan class which would be held at their school. When they were talking about the possible awakened in their class, Lu mentioned that Shu might be the only one who was impossible to acquire it because of its lifestyle. But Shu just pissed them off with his answers, and this gave him additional points. When the class started, their teacher came with the person who would become the teacher in the Dao Yuan class, named Shifei, whom Shu had met several times. The chosen students who were on the list were called one by one, and when the last student was called, they were all surprised that it was Shu. One day, a transferred student was introduced in their class, who also belonged to the Dao Yuan class. His name was Shi, who was going to sit next to Shu because Ling volunteered to switch her seat for him. By evening, their Dao Yuan class started. The first thing that Shifei told them was about the sodium-potassium alloy which was used for blood testing which Shi added that they could use it to create their own weapons. Shifei added that when the sodium-potassium alloy was mixed with a person's blood, the person's level would be known based on the color of the result. When it was tried to all of them, they found out that Shu was only a level F, which was the reason why his classmates considered him as the weakest among them. But Shu did not care and even managed to just annoy his classmates. After he got home, he saw in the system that he had a new item, and it was the stinky tofu. He once again played the Wheel of Fortune and won a paper that suddenly entered Xiao Yu's head. Then Shu realized that Xiao Yu might have been awakened because she could also see a celestial map. But Shu wondered why Xiao Yu's celestial map was the opposite of his. Because of the bad smell of tofu that he could not avoid smelling because of the amount of it in his inventory, he thought of selling it so that he could make money. The next day, when he went out to sell his goods, he saw Mr. Lee practicing swordsmanship. The old man offered to teach him, but Shu simply refused it. While selling and because of people's negative reaction towards his product, his score continued to increase. Someone bought it from him, and he liked it so much that other people tried it too. This made him sell all of Stinky Tofu's and acquired money. At school, since he was good at teasing his classmates, he took advantage of it every day to collect a lot of points. One night, he bought another celestial fruit. 
After swallowing it, he passed the first nebula, causing him to acquire a sword, called the Corpse Dog. For their next training at the Dao Yuan class, they were given spirit stones and asked each of them to train alone. When Xu tried to practice with it, his celestial map suddenly malfunctioned. The next day, while at school, Lu challenged him to an arm wrestling with his right hand. He quickly agreed to this and defeated Lu effortlessly. Xu said that his right hand was strong, so they should try the left hand. But Lu was still surprised that Xu could still defeat him. Xu pretended to be grateful at Lu because his power system had been awakened, but it turned out that he was only doing it to make Lu even more angry at him. One night, he noticed that there were people who came at Mr. Li's house. He peeked from his window and saw an E.I. with four of its companions. It approached the front door, and when Xu heard that it was from the Heavenly Network, he was shocked. When any E.I. entered the house, he intended to invite Mr. Li to join them as the final member of the Heavenly Network. He added that their goal was to bring peace in the world, and there was nothing wrong if Mr. Li would join them. But Mr. Li still refused to join, and any E.I. could not do anything about it. Before they left the house of Mr. Li, NEI noticed that Xu was watching them, so Xu quickly hid. Because of Mr. Li's connection to the Heavenly Network, Xu thought that it would not be bad if he asked the old man to teach him. The next day, Xu talked to Mr. Li and said that he actually wanted Mr. Li to teach him, but Xu had a problem. Xu said that he did not have enough time because he was teaching Xiaoyu to study. Because of this, Mr. Li agreed to teach Xiaoyu so that Xu could use his free time to study swordsmanship. When Xu went to school, he and Xu saw on social media that some of the awakened were using their powers for evil deeds. In the afternoon, before going home, he saw Qingxi walking towards his direction, who was already famous in their school because of what she had shown in the Dao Yuan class. When she got near at Xu, they stared at each other for a moment. When Xu arrived at home, Mr. Li immediately prepared the equipments that he would use in teaching Xu. Before they started, Mr. Li showed him first his ability to cut anything by only using a piece of paper. After that, Xu immediately started the basics in handling the sword until his movements improved. One day, a man from the Heavenly Network visited Mr. Li, and it was Xu Jin. Xu knew about it and hurriedly ran right away to go back home, fearing that there might something bad happen to Mr. Li. He was relieved when he saw Mr. Li and Xu Jin just talking, and when he approached them, Xu Jin asked if he was Mr. Li's student. It was Mr. Li who answered and said that Xu was only a level F, and he would not waste his time on him. Then Xu Jin said what he wanted Mr. Li to know about the reappearance of the ruins. Then he also invited Mr. Li to join the Heavenly Network. But just like what he said to NEI, Mr. Li also rejected the invitation. After Xu Jin left, Mr. Li gave Xu a sodium potassium alloy to check its current level. When they put their blood on it, the color for level A appeared. But after a few moments, the color on Xu's vial lightened, while Xiao Yu's turned even darker like a dark shadow. Xu noticed that his was the same as what he saw on the celestial map, and according to Xiao Yu, it was the same on her celestial map too. So Xu thought that there might be a level higher than level A. When he was about to bury them, Mr. Li suddenly came, so he hid the vials immediately and lied that he was still level F. As he returned to his room, he was able to overcome the second layer of the nebula, causing him to acquire protection for his body and align himself to level C, while Xiaoyu was able to overcome the first layer of the nebula. Because of this, Xiaoyu was able to bring back a creature that had passed away, but its form was like a dark shadow. They tried it on ants, birds, and even to a pig. When they returned to the house, Xiaoyu summoned the pig out. Xu punched it, and the creature immediately lost consciousness. He found out that it was an energy body, so he took out his corpse dog causing the pig to wake up and run away from them. But the corpse dog caught up with the pig and stabbed it. While they were eating, Xu felt that there were awakened people who were fighting each other. He intended to leave Xiaoyu to go and check on this, but Xiaoyu felt the same, so she insisted on going with him. Xu had no other choice but to take Xiaoyu with him, and they immediately went to the area. When they arrived at the place, they saw Shi Fei and his men facing a group of awakened people who were using their abilities for evil deeds. From a distance, they watched the ongoing battle between the group. Shi Fei managed to attack the two enemies, but their leader hid behind the smoke. The two companions of Shi Fei rushed to get him, but when they got into the smoke, the enemies blew them up causing them to die. 
The police arrived there, so the enemy decided to retreat. Xu asked Xiaoyu to go back home and told her that it was dangerous in the area. When Xiaoyu left, he went to the place where the opponents of Shifei hid. While the police were searching the building, the opponents decided to appear to the policemen. The leader carried his two unconscious companions and was chased by Shifei's group. One of Shifei's comrades managed to cut through the opponent with his sword. When Shifei arrived, they noticed that Xu was at the top of their opponent. Because of this, Shifei ordered to arrest Xu as well, for he did not know that he was one of his students. The two women were assigned to fight Xu, while the enemy was fighting Shifei and the others. With the speed of Xu's movements, he seemed like he was just playing with the two girls. After the explosions occurred, Xu noticed that Shifei's men were already unconscious. He suddenly bumped into a man, and when he noticed that the man was going to do something bad to him, he released his intense power. They attacked each other at the same time, and when their fists collided, Xu was able to release the corpse dog, causing him to defeat the enemy. He also immediately left the area before anyone else could see him. When he got home, he and Xiaoyu decided to go back to the place so that Xiaoyu could get a stronger energy body. To make sure that the police and Shifei's group were gone, Xu ordered Xiaoyu to use her power and summon a bird to check the surroundings first. When Xiaoyu noticed that nothing was suspicious, Xu decided to return to the scene of the battle. After confirming that the enemies were gone, Xu told Xiaoyu to follow him. Then he told her to check if she could sense any energy body around. When Xiaoyu felt the energy body of a tall man and two others, Xu ordered her to take the tall man's energy body. Meanwhile, the members of the Heavenly Network had a meeting about the battle that Shifei's group encountered. Because of what was captured by the camera, they also saw Xu, whom they had not been able to identify at that time and was considered to be a level C. They were currently investigating his identity as well as the black shadow surrounding its body. One night, Xiaoyu successfully released the dead energy she got from the previous night, so she quickly went to Xu's room to show it. Xiaoyu said that she could control it as if she was just controlling her body. Xu was even surprised that Xiaoyu said that she could also see this person's memories. Because of this, Xiaoyu found out where did this man's group hid the money that they stole. Xiaoyu wanted to take the money so they could buy their own house, but Xu told her that if they would take it from where it was hidden, they would return it to the police. Xiaoyu was saddened by this, so Xu promised her that they would also be able to buy their own house someday. The next day, the students and teachers welcomed the new school director. Xu was surprised to see that it was Yi Xiao, which he knew immediately that it was a level B. Yi Xiao also felt the power of Xu, so he turned to look at the group of the students. When the class started in the Dao Yuan class, Yi Xiao was also there and informed the students that he would be their immediate superior. He also mentioned that the Heavenly Network was looking for a man that Xi Fei's group had fought one night. After his speech, Shifei announced the distribution of spirit stones. And they would base the amount of spirit stones that each would receive on the level of the students. Based on Shu's level, he received two spirit stones. After the class, Shu spoke to Shi to ask if he knew anything about the price of a spirit stone on the black market. Since Shi knew someone who was interested to buy it, Shu was able to sell it immediately. When Yi Xiao visited Mr. Li, it was with Ms. Lin and teaching Xiao Yu. He informed Mr. Li that they went to the top of the North Mountain, and that they saw there the skeletons that could run and jump, and possibly were level E. He also mentioned that they were looking for the level C practitioner because this person knew how to use a sword. But Mr. Li denied that the person Yi Xiao was referring to was his student. After a while, Yi Xiao sensed that someone was coming, so he decided to leave. When Xu entered the house, Xiao Yu immediately asked him about the Heavenly Network. On the other hand, Mr. Li was thinking about what Yi Xiao said regarding the level C practitioner who could use a sword and the skeletons they saw. And instead of answering Xiao Yu's question, Xu just showed the account book and handed over the newly purchased cell phone. Xu told her good news that the house would be there starting tomorrow. The next day after Xu paid for the house, their teacher called him about their departure. Because of this, Xu just told Xiao Yu that the house had been paid and that he would not be able to go home for a few days because of their training camp. While on the trip, they talked about the ruin that was about to open. Xi said that it had a formation eye which was the most important part of the ruin. And if someone could take it, the entire ruin would also disappear. 
When they arrived at the Beiming Mount camp, Zaifi announced what they were going to do. After that, they fed the students. Suddenly, a big man came who was complaining about the lack of seats. So another man approached this guy and offered him his seat so he could have his dinner. Shu did not like the big man's attitude, so he approached him and told him to stand up. Because this man did not listen and obey him, Shu hit the big guy who was immediately knocked unconscious. Shifei came there to find out who did that to the big guy, but since no one spoke, he just carried the man to his tent. After they ate, they were assigned to train themselves in their tents. Since Shu was singing while on training, he still could not concentrate and the others who were inside the tent, so he decided to go out. While walking, he saw Yi Xiao outside who was looking at the top of the mountain. Then he also discovered that he could practice without singing. Because of this, he went to Lu and teased him so that Lu could not concentrate. The next day, he checked the power system and he got nine celestial fruits in just one night. In the afternoon, he entered his celestial map and used the nine celestial fruits. In return, he was given an energy shield which he liked. While they were standing in line to get food, they heard Lu who was looking for him. Lu wanted to show that he had just succeeded in his training. Then he challenged Shu to a fight with him, but Shifei came there to stop them and suggested to do the arm wrestling instead. Lu did not want to do it but he was forced to agree to the suggestion. Just like before, Shu defeated Lu easily in the arm wrestling. Shifei got interested and challenged Shu, but Shu also defeated him. As he and Shi were walking outside, they noticed the fog approaching them. When the fog reached Shu and Shi, Shu fell into the so-called ruin. When he got up, he was shocked to see a skeleton with an axe that attacked him. He managed to kill it and got the axe which it was carrying. Then he climbed the big rock to get a good view of the whole area. Suddenly, more skeletons appeared and trying to fully get out from this rock. He immediately got down and ran away, leaving the skeletons behind. He also saw other students who were being chased by the skeletons. When the skeleton attacked one of the students, Shu fought against it. Then he approached those he saved to ask them about their plan. They decided to stay in the area until the ruin disappeared, and they also wanted Shu to protect them for the meantime. But Shu rejected it and told them how to kill the skeletons and how to avoid them based on the movement of the ground where they were coming from. Before leaving, he handed them the axe for their protection. He left the area to find the core of the ruin and get the formation eye. As he continued to walk, he encountered more skeletons on his way. Then he got a sword and took it to make it his weapon. He continued to run and he saw a sky rocket and attacked it. When he went where it landed, he saw a man who was not a student of their school. He noticed that he was just seeing a number and not a name on this man. Shu went to the man, then the man immediately hid the sky rocket gun. Previously, the day before this man landed in the ruin, they were given a sky rocket gun that they could use in case they got separated once they entered the mysterious ruin. He introduced himself as Huan Yu from the city of Nanyang. Then Xu introduced himself as Lu and said that he was from Zuma King. Huan Yu told him that he would look for his classmates because he was their class leader. Because of this, Xu said that he was also the leader of his class and that he wanted to go with him. Xu added and said that he would help in finding Huan Yu's companions first before he searched for his own companions. Huan Yu had no other choice but took Xu with him. He actually wanted to leave Xu behind, but he could not do it because Xu could also run fast. They arrived at the place where there were also skeletons that appeared. Huan Yu immediately ran to avoid the skeletons, while Shu continued to follow him. He asked Shu if he could borrow his sword to eliminate the skeletons they encounter. But while Shu was trying to hand it to Huan Yu, he deliberately pretended to made it out of Huan Yu's reach. Huan Yu was annoyed by this, but Shu suddenly got frightened when he saw a skeleton and ran away. As Shu was running away from Huan Yu, he noticed that it survived because of the points added to him from its anger. When he rested, Huan Yu caught up with him, so Shu suggested that they should find a place to rest. The next day, Shu felt hungry and told Huan Yu that he needed to urinate. Then he ate stinky tofu and brought one for Huan Yu. Before he gave it to him, he told a story, but Huan Yu was so annoyed that he suddenly attacked him. They fought and they could move with almost at the same speed. When Shu accidentally let go of his sword, he was forced to use his corpse dog on Huan Yu and he killed him. 
After that, he continued walking until he came to a forest with apple trees. He took the fruits of the tree so he had something to eat other than stinky tofu. But the squirrels who lived there were very angry at him for taking their food and throw stones at him. After he got a few pieces of apples, he immediately left the place. By afternoon, while he was resting, he was thinking about how wide the ruin was and how he would find the formation eye. He thought that it might be in the middle so he decided to go back, but the wolves came and they immediately attacked him. There were so many of them that Shu was forced to run. While he was running, he noticed that he seemed to speed up as if he was just practicing because he was doing it over again. Because of this, he was able to escape from the wolves. When he returned to the place where he left the other students, he noticed that their number had increased. They begged him again not to leave, but Shu said that he would only stay for one night and he would leave the next day. While he was eating an apple, the other students could do nothing but feel envy because of hunger. A man approached him and told him to share the rest of his food. But he did not obey to him and even managed to get back the axe that he left to them. Since it was dawn, he decided to continue to look for the formation eye. As he walked, he felt something approaching him. It turned out to be a skeleton knight who immediately attacked him with the spear it was carrying. He was able to hold onto the spear and able to grab it from the enemy. When the other skeleton knights arrived, Shu immediately retreated. These skeleton knights targeted him with their arrows but he dodged them and successfully hid behind the rocks. Since they could not hit him, the skeleton knights decided to leave. Then Shu took his sword and the axe again. Meanwhile, the members of the Heavenly Network with the students saw the group of skeletons knights that Shu faced earlier. They planned to assassinate the leader of this group first, so the other skeletons would panic. When they noticed a skeleton holding a sword instead of a spear, they thought that it might be the leader of this group. Because of this, they aimed at it with the gun they were carrying. They rejoiced, but they did not know that it was not the leader. Because of this, the real leader immediately ordered his disciples to shower them with arrows. They quickly retreated and ended up in a valley. Then a student noticed Shu who was looking down to the incoming skeletons. As the skeletons got near him, Shu attacked one of them. When he got the spear, he immediately retreated. The skeletons tried to attack him, but they could not even hit Shu. The members of the Heavenly Network were amazed at what Shu did. They thought that he might not belong to the special class student. But there was a student who knew Shu and said that it was the same person who repeatedly defeated Lu in the arm wrestle. As Shu continued walking, he encountered another group of skeleton knights. He used the spear which quickly killed the two skeletons. After killing the other skeletons, he also picked up their spears to use on the other enemies. Soon he was able to eliminate all of his opponents. While the members of the Heavenly Network decided to follow Shu. They saw on the road the ashes of the skeletons who were defeated by Shu. Since the spears of the skeletons were gone, the students immediately thought that Shu had done this. One of their members came to them and reported the situation on the location of the core of the ruin where there were also skeleton knights on guard. Because of this, they planned on how they would reach the core of the ruin. When Shu was able to rest, he ate a celestial fruit that gave him extra power. When the Heavenly Network saw the knights approaching, they were about to begin their plan when a spear suddenly fell on one of the skeleton knights. It was followed by three more spears, then Shu suddenly appeared to face the enemies. The other members of the Heavenly Network immediately came down to help Shu. Because Shu quickly killed the other enemies, only two of them were left when the members of the Heavenly Network reached him. Shu attacked these two skeleton knights and easily defeated them too. He gathered again the spears and swords including the other weapons of his new defeated opponents. While a member of the Heavenly Network was talking to him, he noticed that there were many of them in the area. So he thought of selling the weapons and the armors that he had collected. Since almost everyone did not have any money with them, others thought of exchanging their jewelry for the weapon that Shu was selling. Through this, Shu was able to sell the weapons and got a lot of expensive items. After that, they decided to continue towards the core of the ruin. At night, while they were all resting, Shu noticed that the others were getting weak due to the lack of water and food. So he took some apples and gave it to the members of the Heavenly Network. After they ate, they were surprised when their tiredness suddenly disappeared. The other students approached him for they wanted to eat the apples too, but Shu did not give them because his priority were those who were fighting than those who only wanted to be protected. 
A man approached him and exchanged his beloved watch for an apple, which Xu immediately accepted. After a few moments, they felt strong gust of wind and the dark soul creatures appeared to them. While these creatures were circling them, Xu's corpse dog gone wild and wanted to get out. But Xu did not want to release it because he did not want others to see this. As a soul was about to approach them, it suddenly stopped when it saw Xu and felt fear. It turned out that it could see Xu's terrifying other persona. It immediately left and the other soul creatures also followed it, which surprised all of them. They continued walking and after some time they reached the core of the ruin. The other members of the Heavenly Network and the students who were with them also came there. While resting, a student told the others how Qingxi saved him from the skeleton knight. Xu looked at the deep pit in the middle where the Formation I was believed to be located. But after that, he sold his collected weapons again which he acquired lots of expensive items. And after a while, a student came to him because a high official of the Heavenly Network, named Zhong who was level C, wanted to talk to him. He also summoned Qingxi because Xu and her were the only two who had shown special skills in the fight against the skeletons in the ruin. He also told Xu not to sell the remaining spear because they might use it. Then Zhong tried to measure the depth of the pit with his blood heart sharp sword. After using it, he found out that it only had a depth of 100 meters and it also had a cave at the bottom. While Xu was looking at the system, he found out that they had nine spies with them. But he could not identify which of them were spies. Suddenly, Yi Xiao came there while carrying an apple tree. Xu approached him and Yi Xiao also recognized him immediately. After a while, the angry squirrel came out. It saw Xu so it quickly rushed to attack him. After the apples were picked, they were distributed to others. Xu noticed the squirrel's sadness while watching the people who were eating the apples. Because of this, he gave it an apple and it made this squirrel happy and liked him. Xu Yi also arrived there and while he and Xu were talking, a man approached Xu to buy a spear. This guy said that once they returned he would give his payment. But because there was no certainty about its return, Xu did not agree to it. Because of the man's negative emotion, it was the moment when Xu found out that it was one of the spies that he had detected. While they were all resting, the spies took their action to enter the hole on the ground. As the last member of them was about to enter, Xu grabbed him back. He made an offer to him that if they were to get the Formation I, they would have to divide it evenly. The spy was forced to agree so he could get down and asked Xu to summon his friend to help on the search. When Xu left, the guy quickly jumped but then again, Xu stopped him. When the other spies reached the bottom, they noticed that one of them was missing. Their leader, named Haiping, ignored it and continued on their mission. Because of the spy's annoyance at Xu, he attacked him. But no matter what the spy did to attack Xu, he could not hit him. It was the moment when Xu suddenly shouted to wake up those who were sleeping while accusing the spy. When Yi Xiao heard this, he immediately attacked the spy causing him to fall. It turned out that Yi Xiao already knew that they had spies with them, and he planned to let them go onto the pit first so that they would face the dangers below before they follow. He immediately instructed Zhong to gather their members and other students who could fight. Xu and Qingxi were chosen among the students to be included in the mission. Once everyone was ready, a member of the Heavenly Network used its power to create a ladder for them to descend in the pit. When they reached the bottom, they found the spies dead and were positioned around Haiping. They continued walking until they noticed a door that opened by itself. As soon as they entered, the door immediately closed. At that moment, the Dark Souls came out and rushed to attack but Yi Xiao used his power on them. The other souls also started to attack the others, and every time a soul was about to attack Shu, it would immediately retreat at once Shu's chest lit up. Because of this, only Shu attacked the Dark Souls. And every time he defeated these creatures they were accumulated on his chest. Out of the Dark Souls' fear on Shu, they would escape immediately whenever they see Shu. After Shu's chest lightened up again, someone suddenly attacked one of their colleagues. It turned out to be Haiping who was now one of the souls, and when Yi Xiao saw it, he immediately attacked Haiping. Xu noticed that its power had a resemblance to Xiao Yu's power. After a while, the skeletons started to come to them with their general. Yi Xiao had a hunch that the general spear was the formation I. When Yi Xiao started to attack, the skeleton general also hit it, and it was followed by another attack from Yi Xiao, causing it to kill the opponent's horse. This was when the battle of both sides began and all rushed to attack. 
Shu used his spears to aim at the enemies. When the enemy's arrow was about to hit him, Xingxi saved him. As the battle continued, Shu thought of going inside, hoping that he might find something important there. When he entered the first building, he was attacked by Hyping Soul, but he defeated him with his corpse dog. He continued until he reached the last and entered it, then he saw what looked like statues of knights on the sides. He approached one of them when he suddenly heard something and turned around. The statue that was close to him had been awakened, so he immediately became alert when he also saw that the other statues were also awakened. His corpse dog came out, causing the one approaching in front of him to stop. It retreated along with the others and Shu grabbed the corpse dog. When he approached one of these guarding statues, he noticed that its face looked scared. He wanted to take its spear, but it would not let go, so he threatened it causing the statue to got scared and let go of the spear. He also took the other spears and these creatures could not do anything about it. As the battle outside continued, the skeleton general sensed that something bad was going on, so he used his power to attack Xiao because he wanted to go inside the building. But Xiao managed to parry the enemy's attack and grab the spear that it hold. After defeating the attackers of Qingxi, Xu went up and noticed that Xu was not with them. While Xu reached the interior of the last building, he saw a letter and the golden object on the table. When the skeleton general felt this, he let go of the spear and quickly entered the building. It was only the moment when Xiao realized that the spear was not the formation eye because the ruin had not yet disappeared, so he followed the enemy inside. Then the general noticed that his guards had no spears on their hands. When Yi Xiao caught up with the skeleton general, he attacked it, so the enemy ordered the skeleton guards to kill Yi Xiao. When Xu touched the golden thing, the general came there as well. As the general rushed at him, the golden thing's cover was removed and the golden stamp fell. When Xu caught it, it entered his body then he realized that it was already the formation eye. After the general mentioned the mountain and river seal, it was the moment that the time in the ruin stopped, and the formation eye gradually absorbed the palace and the guards. While Xiao and others outside the room turned into black smoke as well as the other people they left behind. The same also happened to those outside the core of the ruin for all of them were absorbed into the formation eye. After absorbing the spears that Shu was carrying, they also disappeared. The people noticed that the fog was gradually disappearing and those who entered the ruins were able to return to the real world. Shi started looking for Shu, but he could not see him. When Xingxi found out about this, she also looked for Shu. The students were all lined up to surrender the equipment they got from the ruins to the heavenly network. She came there to inform their teachers that they still had not yet seen Shu. Then the students started to talk about Shu's pranks on them while they were in the ruins. It was not long before Shu came who was glowing from the jewels he got because of his soul weapons. It turned out that Xingxi found him and told him to surrender the spears to their teacher, so he came there to do it. While he was walking home, Xiao Yu was waiting for him on a tree. And when they arrived at home, Mr. Li and Ms. Lin were also waiting for them. Xu mentioned that what he learned from Mr. Li helped him a lot while he was in the ruins. And he also thanked them for watching over Xiao Yu while he was away. After they entered the house, Xu asked Xiao Yu to release the level D energy body. Then Xu took out the pearls he got from the ruin which were the food of the energy body. He tried to feed the color black to it to see what effect it had on the energy body. It let out an intense aura and then it laughed non-stop. Then Shu gave the apples to Xiao Yu, and the squirrel suddenly appeared who was enraged while Xiao Yu was eating the apples. Xiao Yu held the squirrel and named it Little Fear Su. While Shu was in his room, he entered the dimension inside the formation eye. He thought that this might be the ability of this object which was to observe the world. He also noticed that he could control the aura around him. When he came back, he noticed something under it, so he entered it too. He saw the spears he got in the palace and the big gate. He tried to open it, and because it was heavy, the gate only moved a little. He peeked inside and saw a palace. He thought that if he got stronger, he would be able to open it completely. Suddenly, he heard Xiao Yu's voice calling him, so he came back. Meanwhile, Nei and Xu Jin discussed the formation eye of the ruin which Yi Xiao suspected was taken by the spies. Because he knows the ability of the seal of the mountain and river was to stir up the aura of the world, he said that he had assigned someone to monitor and immediately give him a report in case there was anything unusual in the flow of the aura. They had also discussed Xu and Qingxi who helped a lot in the battles at the ruin.
This is the last episode in Season 1 of Spare Me Great Lord Inns. I hope you like it and give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel so you won't miss newly uploaded videos. Thank you for watching.